Alrighty, so here we are back at section 5.2. I was going to do this as a warm up on Friday, but then we started discussing courses to take for next year, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the uh, protractor and all that stuff, we'll wait till later to do this because it's hands on and I need to pass out the protractors to other classes still. So um, I apologize for that. Uh, the reason why I'm not in this week is because on Friday, oh, well, actually, it started Wednesday. Wednesday last week, I went in um, to get some lab work done. And then on Friday, around be right before fifth period, um, I got um, called by Kaiser uh, to immediately go to the urgent care um, because I some my lab work came out with some negative stuff in it. So I went in, uh, they had to admit me um, because technically my kidneys were failing. I haven't been drinking much water um, and I haven't been eating much at all, just out of feeling nauseous and sick um, for the past month. Um, and that was due because my kidneys were failing. So um, it's kind of like a cycle there. Um, and so I apologize uh, for that. Um, Today, um, I want to go ahead and finish up um, the sections that we need to complete, um, section 5.2 and also section 5.3, so that you can move forward. Um, this would be exactly what would I would go over in class. So there should be no excuses that you that I'm not there because this is exactly what uh, I would go over in class. So make sure that you watch the whole video, take notes um, in your notebook, just like we did um, with 5.2. Um, I'm going to do the same with 5.4, um, probably on Thursday or Friday. That way you can continue and move forward instead of being stuck. Okay, so please don't use my absence as an excuse to not do anything because progress reports are due on Friday. Tomorrow I'm using uh, the time to during the day to start grading all of the work that I haven't put in because of my illness and my absences. Um, so um, I will catch up with grades as of this week and by friday i will have a progress report for you um, on queue so if you don't want to get in danger of failing make sure that you have a, a c or better in the class uh, by friday after i grade all the homework assignments that i have put up in um, google classroom so right now the expectation is you do everything um, except for the protractor uh, um, activity i took that off um, because again um, i'm not there hands on to do that with you but everything else you should be able to do um so make sure that you get that done um all right so i'm going to go ahead and complete this this will be up tomorrow um for wednesday so that you can watch the video on a google classroom um, i'll put it up as a youtube link and then watch it um, or if you're not watching at home, take notes, et cetera, et cetera. So the expectation tomorrow is that you uh, take notes of the video because for 5.3 um, and then um, obviously do the homework assignment for 5.3, which I'll put in Google Classroom also. Um, other than that, um, the only thing, the only other reason why I'm out is because I uh, got COVID from somebody at school. Um, I haven't, I don't really go grocery shopping um, at all. I do everything Instacart. Um, I don't go to stores or anything like that. So the only place I could have caught it is at school. So be careful, put your masks on right. Um, because again, it's uh, that Omicron variant is very contagious. Um, I uh, went in and, you know, uh, tested positive. And so therefore, you know, I have to wait until I test negative, which hopefully will be in a couple of days and I'll be back on Monday. Hopefully, if all goes right, um, I do miss you guys and I hope that um, you're doing okay. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with um, kind of the review or the warm up that I was going to do on Friday for section 5.2. I think for some classes, I went over some of these bisect ones, but I don't think for others I did. So I'm going to go over all three again. You could fast forward if you need, already saw it. Or you can slow down if you need to and rewind if you need to see it again, um, because I am going to go a little bit fast, not a lot, but a little bit fast, um, because, again, you have the capability of rewinding or fast forwarding. So there you go. 
So let's start with number 18. Number 18 says um, bisect. So right now we have, um, let me make this smaller. Um, it says U, W, or U, uh, U, yeah, U, W. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay. This ray bisects this angle. So technically, this angle here is congruent to this one over here. They are the same number. It also tells me um, that the measure of TUW, TUW in here is 13X minus 5. And the measure of, of WUV is 7X plus 31. Uh, we're supposed to find the value of X. So again, in geometry, the word is bisect. And to bisect means to cut in half. Or the two halves are congruent. Okay, so these two parts are congruent. So in algebra, what we're going to do is we're going to set these two equal to each other. So the measure of angle TUW equals to the measure of angle um, WUV. And so we can go ahead and write um, supplement or um, substitute TUW is 13X minus 5, and that equals WUV, which is 7X plus 31. And then we solve for X. So here I'm going to subtract 7X from both sides. And we end up with that 6X minus 5 equals 31. I'm going to add 5. I end up with 6x equals to 36, divide by 6. We end up with x equal to 6, but they're looking, yeah, they're looking for x up here. So that is our answer. And there is question 18. So again, if you need to see that again, you can rewind it. Um, or you can fast forward if you already saw it before. For number 19, M-O, M-O bisects PMN. So let's take a look at PMN is this angle here. Again, that means that this angle here is congruent to this one here. Um, it says that the measure of PMN, the whole angle is 74. And so that means this whole thing is 74 degrees. And OMN, OMN, that's that little angle in there, which I'm going to go ahead and draw an arrow right in this spot here. That is 2x plus 7. And it says find the value of x. Okay, so we're only looking for this angle. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, uh, first of all, geometry. We know what bisect means. So in geo, again, cut in half. Uh, that's bisect. And in algebra, what are we doing? We are going to take, first of all, I know that the measure of angle PMN equals 74. That's the whole angle. The whole angle in red. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, the whole angle 74 and I'm going to divide that by 2 because that's going to give me the angle, the measure of angle OMN, which is going to be half of this whole angle. So this is half and that is half. So again, um, 74, hold on, 74 divided by 2, we got 37 degrees. So I know that the measure of angle OMN equals 37 degrees, but they also tell me that OMN is 2x plus 7. The measure of angle OMN is 2x plus 7. So since those two are equal, okay, these two are equal, then I can set 2x plus 7 equal to 37. I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. 
I get 2x equals to 30. I divide by 2, and I get x equals to 15. And again, they are looking for x, so there is our answer. All right, and for number 20, for our warm-up, um, it says here that EF uh, bisects uh, CEB, so let me take a look where CEB is. CEB is this angle here. Again, that means that this angle is congruent to this one. And CEF is 7x plus 21. They also tell me that FEB is 10x plus, minus 3. And it says find the measure of DEB, so that's this angle in here is the one we're going to be looking for. So let me get a different color here. Uh, we are looking for this angle right in here, okay? Let me just... All right, so first of all, since I know um, the word bisect means to cut in half, I know then in algebra that the measure of angle CEF, oops, I wrote that wrong. It happens to be right now 1030 in the evening. So, so the angle of angle CEF equals to the angle of FEB. Okay, this is congruent to this. So therefore, um, if I substitute 7x plus 21, equals to 10x minus 3. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 7x here and here. I end up with 21 equals to 3x minus 3. I'm going to add 3 here and add 3 here. I get 24 equals to 3x. By the symmetric property, I can write this as 3x equals 24 divide by 3, and we get x equal to 8. Now, in this case, they don't want x. They want the measure of angle DEB. And let me change that color to the purple that I used right in there because that's what we're looking for. So let me go ahead and I think I used that color. All right, so... Okay, so we're going to take this and plug it into DEB, and actually we need to do a little bit of math here because they don't give us anything about DEB, but I know that right now this whole thing makes a line. This whole thing here makes a line. So I know that if I'm going to find the measure of DEB, the math that I'm going to have to do is I'm going to, I know that uh, the measure of angle C, E, F plus the measure of angle F, E, B plus the measure of angle, um, what was it, D, E, B. Let me make this a little bit. Actually, I'm going to have to write it a little bit smaller because everything's going to move. So the measure of angle... CEF plus the measure of angle FEB plus the measure of angle DEB equals to 180. It makes a line. So if you don't see that line, um, I guess I will highlight it in, I don't know, this pink here. So it makes this line here. Okay, those three angles make that line. So that's uh, a line is supplementary, so therefore it creates 180. We know CEF was 7x plus 21. I know FEB was 10x plus uh, minus 3. And I am looking for DEB. I'm going to call that... Um, question mark, I guess, for now. Um, and I'm going to make that equal to 180, okay? Now I'm going to substitute x for this x value here and this x value here. 
So I end up with 7 times 8 plus 21 plus 10 times 8 plus 3 plus the question mark. That's what we're looking for down here. And then that equals to 180. So we're going to do some multiplication, some addition, subtraction, etc. And let's see what we get. So I have a calculator here. I got 7 times 8. That's 56 plus 21. We got 10 times 8, which is 80, plus 3, plus question mark, equals 180. So I'm going to go ahead and add 56 plus 21 plus 80, um, and then plus, or is it? No, no, wait, 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 before I make a mistake. This should be minus, right? Minus three. And I keep doing that because I'm in a rush to get some rest. Um, that should be negative. So let me go again. 56 plus 21 plus 80 um, minus three. That equals to 154. plus question mark equals to 180. Subtract 154 from both sides. And we end up with question mark equals to 26 degrees. That means that the measure of angle DEB equals 26. And there is our answer. Okay, so we did our warm up. I'm going to go ahead and jump into section 5.3. Okay, um, so I'll give you a moment to write down the um, the title. The homework assignment again will be in Google Classroom. So I'll give you a moment to write that down. All right, so today's lesson 5.3 is called Angles Formed by Transversal. So obviously we're going to have to go over some vocabulary, the word transversal, uh, which pops up a lot, um, and the different angles that are formed by transversals. Um, so let's get into that. All right. So for our launch, it says we're going to begin with some vocabulary. So let's start with the term transversal. The definition is a line that intersects two or more lines. So one line that intersects two or more lines. Uh, here is an example, a picture example of a transversal. This here is the transversal. And let me use a highlighter. This is a transversal. I'm going to go ahead and use pink. And I'm going to OK. And these are the two lines that it intersects. So these are just two lines, line L and line M. Now, the way I say that these two lines and, and a transversal, um, this is line L, this is line M. Uh, later on, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what happens if the two lines are parallel. So we're going to talk about parallel lines in a little bit. Um, but again, here we have two lines and a transversal. Um, and that is pretty much it. So if you have anything, you know, one can go this way. Um, one can go this way, and then let me go ahead and color those in green since I use that for the lines. So I could call this line, um, I don't know, like Z and X, and then I can draw a transversal right through it um, like that. Okay. So there are two lines 
line Z and Z line X. And there's our transversal. So again, there's infinitely many ways I can draw that. Um, just remember, it's only two lines. Or sometimes there's more, but we always look at two at a time with one transversal. All right. What happens when we have two lines uh, with a transversal? So a little bit of exploration here. Um, when we have transversals that go through two lines, there are angles that are formed. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight angles that are formed. Now, keep in mind that we don't have to um, name all angles by numbers. Not all angles will be named by numbers. Uh, you can use um, letters can be used. to label the angles. So it could be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Um, and also order doesn't matter. Meaning like if I had uh, two, tra uh, two lines cut by a transversal, Here's the line X and Z, and here's my transversal. I could use like, for example, A, uh, B, uh, C, D, E, F, G, and H. So like the order doesn't matter. Another example, I could also use numbers. Um, and again, let me change the orientation of this it could go this way also like that here's the transversal oops this is t here's let's say line um i'll call it a and b actually i should use yeah a and b um and i could use like for example one two three four five six seven eight so again, order doesn't matter. It's just the name, okay? So eight angles are formed by transversals. Now, the location of angles, um, pairs of angles, uh, have specific names. The first pair of angles is called corresponding angles. And corresponding angles are angles on the same side of the transversal and in the same position. So I'm going to go ahead and label all of the corresponding angles. I'm going to use different colors to indicate where they are. Okay. So for example, um, corresponding angles here, um, one angle one is corresponding to angle five. So these two are corresponding. Um, angle four is corresponding to angle eight. So they're on the same side of the transversal. These are on the same side of this line. One and five are on the same side. They make a pair, they're corresponding. Four and eight are on the same side. They make a pair. They're corresponding. So they're on the same side of the transversal and in the same position. So they're on the top left. This one's on the top left of the bottom line. This one's on the bottom left of line L. This one's on the bottom left of line M. So they're on the same side and on uh, the same position. There's also two more. So there's a four corresponding angles altogether. Okay, there's four in total. The next one we have is angle two and angle six. Angle two is corresponding to angle six. They're on the same side of the transversal and they also um, are in the same position. 
Number two is on the top right of letter L or line L. And six is on the top right of line M. Okay. And there is one more that we haven't talked about. Um, and that one would be uh, three and seven. So let me take a look at a color. So three and seven, um, angle three and angle seven, they are corresponding. Three and seven are in the same side of the transversal. And three is on the bottom right of line L. And seven is on the bottom right of line M. So all of these are examples of pairs of angles that are called corresponding angles. So again, you take notes. I'm not asking you to memorize it. You have these in your notes. So when I ask you to uh, name all the corresponding angles, you have this as, again, a guide. Okay. So let me move forward. All right. Um, the next type of angles that we have are alternate interior angles. The definition for alternate interior angles is they're interior angles that are non-adjacent, so they're not next to each other, and on opposite sides of the transversal. Okay. Um, here there is two examples, or there are two interior angles in total. Okay. I'm going to go ahead again and use two different colors. Um, for example, um, their interior angles are not next to each other, and they're on opposite sides of the transversal. So angle four and angle six are opposite sides of the transversal, and they're not next to each other. So angle four and angle six are alternate interior angles. Okay, they're on the inside of the two lines. That's why they call it interior. And there's another one. There's three and five. Angle three and angle five are also alternate interior. They kind of zigzag here like this. So they're opposite sides of the transversal. And they're not next to each other. They're opposite each other. Okay. So these are two examples of alternate interior angles. Like I said before, I'm not asking you to memorize. Write down the notes, and therefore you have them when you take your quizzes, when you take your test. There will be a quiz after 5.3, so make sure that you study this. All right. Next, we have the term alternate exterior angles. Alternate exterior angles are exterior angles non-adjacent, and on the opposite sides of the transversal. So they act a lot like interior, but instead of being on the inside of the lines, they're on the outside where one and two and eight and seven exist. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and um, write down exterior angles. There are two of them. For example, one is exterior with seven, they're on opposite sides of the transversal, and they're on the outside of the two lines. So angle one and angle seven are alternate exterior angles. And then we have another one. I guess I'll use green. Two and eight. Angle two is alternate exterior to angle eight. Again, they're on the opposite sides of the transversal, and they're on the exterior of the two lines. Okay, so alternate exterior angles. The next one we have, we it's called consecutive interior angles, or what we call same side interior, depending on what book you use or what definition you see on line. Sometimes they call it consecutive interior angles. That's what I use. And sometimes they're called same side interior. They mean the same thing, okay? So the definition is interior angles that are on the same side of the transversal. So interior angles, when they say interior, they mean between line L and M. That is where 4, 3, and 5, and 6 exist. That's interior. So this would be interior. And out here, this is exterior and this is exterior. I guess I'm going to go back here and 
in the original definition, I'm going to go ahead and insert that info here. So these are interior angles. Now that that makes a little sense. And these are exterior angles. One and two, and these are also exterior. Eight and seven. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and finish up these last two. So um, interior angles that are on the same side of the transversal, that would be, for example, angle four and um, angle five. Let me write that better. Hold on. Angle four and angle five. Those are interior angles that are on the same side of the transversal four and five and obviously the other two will be three and six so angle three is consecutive interior angles with angle six so four angle four and angle five are consecutive interior angles or same side interior angles and angle three and angle six are also consecutive interior angles all right, and that pretty much is the vocabulary for today. So again, you need to remember the differences by, again, looking at your notes, corresponding angles, where they are, alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, and consecutive interior angles. So let's do an example here. And again, I'm going fast, but again, because this is a video, you can rewind it, you can pause it, you can fast forward it. So um, I don't need to uh, wait too long because again, you can pause the video and write things down as you go. So for number one, uh, it says name the type of angle relationship. If there's no relationship, write none. So let's go ahead and do number one. Number one, uh, or letter A, excuse me. It says, what are angle one? And I'm going to go ahead and highlight things as we go. And then I'm going to move the highlighter around. So what is angle? Let me see what the dot size is. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, that seems good. All right. So angle one is here. Angle eight is here. And then it says, what are they? So Notice that this picture uh, doesn't look like the ones we've been looking at, right? The lines here all face left and right. The, this one did, this one did, this one did, and even the one that I used as um, the just to show where the angles are located. But again, what you could do is you could flip your paper around or tilt your head sideways. And what I mean by that is I can uh, do that right now. Um, I'm going to take a snippet of, um, let me see, because my battery is going dead. I'm going to take a snippet of this picture, and I can technically um, view it by literally moving it sideways. Excuse me. Let me get this like this so that it's left and right. If you're more comfortable with that, that's fine. Okay. Um, you can do that if you need to. Um, but these are the same picture. So angle one and eight, angle one and eight, they are on the outside, exterior, exterior of the two lines, and they alternate, okay? Alternate, they alternate. So this is an alternate. Exterior. Angle angles actually okay all right next what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and move this around so now we're looking at angle two and angle three so again if you wanted to take a snippet of that and take a look at it um the other way where the lines are facing uh, left and right instead of up and down because it's easier for you. Again, you can tilt your paper. That is fine also. And you can notice that these are on the same side. They're on the same side of the transversal. Okay. So these are same side interior or what you call 
I like calling them a consecutive because consecutive means next to each other. Consecutive interior angles. Okay. All right. I'm going to throw that out and then I'm going to do the next one. Uh, five and seven. Five is here. Seven is here. Um, again, you could take a snippet. I'm just going to do that once for now, uh, just to give you an idea that you can move your paper um, sideways if you like to see these left and right, um, which is fine. So here I could take the picture and go like that. And um, like the other examples, they're on the, um, again, these are on the same side of the transversal, but it skips one, right? So this would be like this example, the first one we did. So here we see um, angle one and angle five, for example, uh, they are on the same side of the transversal and in the same position. Top left, uh, excuse me, yeah, top left um, for line L and top left for line M, okay? So if I move forward here to our question, um, again, this would be um, corresponding angles. Oops, excuse me. It's already 11 o'clock. I'm a little tired. So corresponding Okay. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and move forward. Number two and seven. So two and seven, again, um, I'm hoping that you can now see it. These are on the inside of, or, or what we call the interior of the transversal. They are alternating. Okay. They're opposite. So this is alternate interior angles. And it should be in there. Um, and again, like I said, I'll do example one with the snippet, but I'm not going to do that with the rest just out of timing. So I don't want this to last like two hours long. So uh, let me paste that. Again, we can move that sideways and you can see they alternate and they're on the inside of the two lines. Okay. All right, and the last two here, let's take a look. Um, no, it's not going in the trash, okay. All right, and we have one and three. One and three. Um, that looked like the one we did with five and seven. Um, and yes, they behave the same way, okay? So again, if I take my snippet tool here, snipping tool um, and I paste that and then I move this uh, sideways you can see that you know five and seven one and three they're on the same side of the transversal and they're on the same position so again we call that again corresponding angles And lastly, I'm going to go ahead and take that off. Um, we have six and seven. Okay, so that looks a lot like two and three, right? We had two and three earlier called consecutive interior. If I have six and seven are also consecutive interior. Now, to keep things... Um, kind of shorthand, um, alternate interior. I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. Uh, I write alternate interior. In shorthand, I, I write alt int. Okay. For alternate exterior, I write alt x.
for um, corresponding angles. I just write, write um, excuse me, C O R R E S, corresponding angles. And then lastly, so it's just a shorthand, you know, so that way we're not like, you know, writing so much to think, keep things quick. Um, so alternate interior angles, alternate exterior corresponding, and then we have consecutive. Interior. So for this one, I write consecutive interior. Okay. Um, so again, because then you're writing all of this out, da, 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 so I just shorthand that. Okay. All right. Uh, and we're almost done. So uh, for our next example, number two, um, it says, name the type of angle relationship. If no relationship, uh, write none. Um, so for this one, we're going to take out four colored pencils or crayons or highlighters, uh, but we need four. Um, share with the, uh, someone, one of your neighbors, if you want, like if they have blue and pink and you have purple and green, you could kind of uh, share your colors. Um, I'm going to pick different colors here, four colors. Um, and we're going to use those colors to kind of indicate. So I guess I'll use red. Um, and actually, I'm going to use a highlighter. So let me go with uh, red. I'm going to use blue, which is easy to access here. I'm going to use green. And I guess I will use, I don't know. I wanted something obvious. Let's go with pink. All right. All right, so it says, name the type of angle relationship. If no relationship, write none. So let's start with 5 and 13. Um, all right, I'll start with red. So 5 and 13. I don't even know why we need four different colors because again, we're doing the same thing as we did before. Oh, I, I just remembered, sorry. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. All right, so what the four different colors is, is right now there are four different um, scenarios of two lines cut by a transversal. That's what I was trying to recall. So um, the four, this is one, Let me draw that a little bit better and a little bit thicker. So here is one transversal with two lines. And I keep messing that up. Sorry. Try that again. And I do it again. You could laugh now if you want. Okay. So there is one transversal. Here is another transversal, which is blue. hard to draw. Okay, there's another transversal going this way. And then finally, there's another transversal down here. Okay, because we always look at two lines cut by one transversal. Two lines cut by one transversal. So um, what we're going to do is when I take a look at 5 and 13, uh, the angles must belong to the same transversal to be an angle pair. So, for example, if 5 and 13 have a relationship, then they're in the same color bubble, okay? They're in the same color bubble. So right now, if I take a look at the first one, 5 and I'm just going to use a random yellow color or let me use something I haven't used. I'll use purple. Okay. So let's take a look at five. Five is here. 13 is here. And then I would ask, are they in the same color? And the answer is yes. They're both in blue. Okay. They're both in the blue. 
Um, and since they're both in the blue, then they have they could have a relationship. If they're in different color bubbles, like for example, if I wrote five and ten, well, five and ten don't have any color in common. They're completely in two different colors. Um, those have no relationship whatsoever. So five and thirteen do have a relationship. Five is in the top left corner. Thirteen is in the top left corner. Uh, we call that uh, corresponding. Okay, that's corresponding. All right. Now let's move to 7 and 14. Notice that 7 and 14, there are, they are also in the blue. Both of them have blue in common. They're in the blue bubble. And 7 and 14... They have a relationship. They're opposite each other and they're on the inside. So they're called alternate interior angles. So this is alternate interior. Okay. All right. Now let's take a look at three and six. Now, if you take a close look, I would ask, what do they have in common? Do they have, are they both in the same bubble? And the answer is yes, they're both in the green one. So um, they're both in green. All right, here in the green bubble. Ignore red and blue, just think of the green bubble. And three and six also have a relationship. They're on the exterior of the two lines. And they alternate. So this is alternate exterior. Okay. All right. And again, you can slow down and try to uh, kind of comprehend as you go. Rewind it. Try it again. Just kind of make sense of it. Um, and again, I'll, if you have questions, I can answer them later as we go, as I get back to class. Okay. So 9 and 16. I would again ask, do they have the same color in common? Um, and the answer is yes. They have the pink in common. So I'm going to go ahead and go change my pen to pink. Nine and ten, they alternate. Okay, and they're on the exterior. So this again is alternate exterior. All right, and then I'm going to move this again. We have four and we have seven. Um, four and seven, um, if we take a look, they're both in the green. Okay, they're both in the green. So if you guess green, that is correct. Okay, um, and notice that, okay, so we're looking at this line. And these two, uh, this transversal, excuse me, and these two lines. So if these are the two lines, this is interior, and these are on the same side of the transversal. So again, we call that same side interior, or we can call that uh, consecutive. Consecutive interior. Consec. What did I say? I keep forgetting. Yeah, consecutive interior. Okay. All right, let's keep going. Now we have 2 and 10. Um, again, what color do they have in common? And if you said red, that is correct. So these have red in common. And 2 and 10 are on the same side of the transversal. But they are um, on the same position, not in the inside, right? So they're not on the interior. One is on the top right, and the bottom is on the top right also. Of, so they're in the same position, and they're in the same side of the transversal. So these are called, um, con not consecutive, they're called corresponding. Corresponding angles. All right, now we go to 8 and 14. 8 is here, 14 is here. Again, what color do they have in common? 
So it's not pink, it's not green, it's not red. If you guess blue, that is correct. So 8 and 14, again, they're on the same side of the two lines. Um, and, uh, excuse me, they're on the same side of the transversal, 8 and 14. And they're inside the two lines. Uh, so again, this is same side interior, or I use consecutive. Consecutive. All right. Six and 11. What color do they have in common? So six is in green, blue. 11 is in pink, red. There is nothing in common there, so we would write none. So no, no, no color in common. Therefore, they have no relationship whatsoever. And we move on to 4 and 13. I would ask the same thing. 4 is in red and green. 13 is in pink and blue. Again, none. They have nothing in common. And lastly, we have 4 and 19. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me, 4 and 9. I don't know where I saw 19. Um, those two, yeah, you can see it. They're in the same color red. Um, and again, they alternate, okay, they're opposite sides, and then again, and they're on the inside of the two lines here. So this is alternate interior, okay? So again, um, go back if you need to, to kind of go through each one if you need to. If not, again, um, awesome, move forward, and we're good. Now, in regards to the rest of this stuff here, um, for the wrap up, I had this activity, but I'm not going to bother with it now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for the wrap up. Um, actually, let me think. Yeah, I'll wait for this on Thursday. Um, this will be something, uh, you'll do on Thursday. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in right here. Um, I'll put that activity up on Thursday. So this will be Thursdays. Work in class. Um, and this part also. I'm going to leave that for Thursday. Okay, so right now I'm going to go ahead and move to the last part here, which is the homework. So the homework is going to be in Google Classroom, kind of a short um, and sweet um, lesson today because it is Wednesday. It is a, uh, a late start day. So um, I wanted to do this lesson because it is short enough to for you to kind of go over the notes and write them down in your notebook in class. And then at home, you can finish up the homework for 4.3. I'll be putting that in. Make sure you get it in by Friday, um, actually by Thursday, because um, to be honest, I need that for progress reports. So any homework you haven't done, it's going to be Mark Zero in Google Classroom. I did take out, again, the protractor uh, thing, so you don't have to worry about that one. But the rest of it, um, if you know you have uh, not done it, make sure you get as much as you can done because even though I'm not there, it's not an excuse for you not to do your work, okay? So um, again, I got uh, sick. You guys get sick, you know, there's still expectations of getting things done. So uh, make sure you do that. Um, all right, so again, this is all in Google Classroom. Um, and that is our lesson for 5.3. So. Uh, tomorrow, I'll put up the other activities uh, for Thursday uh, for Section 5.3, and we're probably going to do more practice on 5.3 on Friday um, because, um, again, we need practice. We have not maybe seen this before, or we maybe did, and it's been a while, right? 
All right. So that's pretty much it. Um, for me, uh, if you're doing this late at night, have a good night. If you're doing this in class, like you're supposed to, well, I guess have a good morning and afternoon, um, and have a good day. Uh, bye.